Okay guys, so what we have here is a 2004 Subaru um, STI. What's it? <laughs> it's an STI. It's, it's a Subaru Impreza WRX Impreza. STI. Or also we like to call it long name no kensei. Yeah, you know that sometimes there's a name you can't remember? I'm like that with Impreza apparently. But anyway, so we're going to have to pull the whole engine out. Um, as we discussed before, the exhaust cam shattered and exploded all over so um, anyway so this is a whole big mess because it's turbo and it's power you know it's powered by plumbing um, we've got all that forced induction thanks to the turbo and so we have all sorts of fun stuff so that's why we tied back the hood because we're gonna yank this bad boy out um, so some of the first things that we're going to take off is we're going to take off this. And what is this? This is the... Intercooler. What does it do? It makes the air thick. Thick. If you cool air, it thickens it. It's more potent. So we're going to go ahead and get that pulled out. We're going to pull the battery. We're going to pull all the tanks and stuff. The AC compressor is on this side. And so we need a place to put the AC compressor. We're going to try to not discharge it if possible. And because the lines for that, we've got plumbing everywhere on this thing. But the plumbing's on this side, so we're going to take the AC compressor and flop it over to this side. In order for it to have a place to live, we're going to pull all of these items out of the way. Once they're moved out of the way, uh, it'll be a okay, lot easier. So this easier. oil catch can here is just extra plumbing for our power plumbing. Power by plumbing. Power by plumbing. Power plumbing. It's like it's one fearsome bidet. That's what I guess. But anyway, Brian already uh, emptied it. You can kind of see it's kind of like this frothy milk stuff because it's oil and water vapor. Looks like um, a byproduct of a head gasket failure. Yeah. So if we didn't have these oil catch cans on there, where would all of that accumulate? Where would that be? That would stay in the intercooler. Gotcha. So we see we've got this plumbing here uh, that carries all of the crud gives it a place that it has to land or falls into and gets caught so that it doesn't bugger up the intercooler. Actually, that too. Yep, that's right. We've got another one back over here. So that's more to keep track of. So I like the Unipaint pens best. Sharpie is the best I can find. That's all they have at Staples nowadays. And the paint scheme of this engine or the color scheme is obviously an important thing to the owner of this vehicle. But with this much plumbing, you have to do something to keep track of all of it so that things go smoothly and correctly and not have to have a bunch of diagnosis at the end. So you shake up your paint pen, um, pull the hose off. This goes to the oil catch can. And so for, there's a lot of red there, so I'll probably be better off using a red pen, but I've got red, blue, and yellow. I've got primary colors. The primary colors are one, two, three. Red, yellow, and blue. So I got three dots there, so I know that hose goes there. And uh, I'll probably split this one here. I'll do that off camera. But, you know, same thing. You know, I'll just do like a plus, like that. You know, just little marks. I don't feel bad about doing it, even with such a pretty motor, because as this is done, you look down here, you can see that it's got white paint pens on here. This is the plug where you get access to the wrist pin to pull the pistons out if you're going to split the block. And they got a paint mark here and a paint mark here. There's a blue paint mark there. There's paint marks on your timing marks, usually. This one's not yet. It will by the time I'm done with it. But it's normal to have these little paint marks. I'm going to be considerate and making color coordinated just because that's how I am. But that'll help things to go really smoothly. I won't have to worry, did this go down here, did it go over there? You know, I see my three red dots and three red dots and I'll do some, you know, different colors and different numbers. I'll have a circle or whatever. That's how I keep track of these things. So moving on, we're going to go ahead and start tearing into this a little bit. Set this can over here. And what I like to do is I'll get set up with a 10 millimeter on a little wobble 3 8 drive. And I'll use my butterfly gun. It's one of my favorite little tools because it's low air consumption and it's high RPM. It's really easy to work with. So I'll have a magnet dish set out and I'll just go through and start pulling some bolts. Um, pull them and I group them. You know, for example, these two bolts, I'll keep them together in the dish or I'll keep them together up here. Looks like the vehicle owner left me a tool. That's nice of him. Thanks, Jesse. Just kidding, you'll get that back. 
Jesse's also a subscriber, so I throw that in there for fun and jest. But you just group everything together and just cruise around and get everything off. Negative cable comes off first. And the reason being is if you're on the positive cable and the negative were hooked up, if I went across from the positive to here, it would arc and short and it can cause all kinds of damage, not to mention scare the crap out of you. Is usually all you get in a black mark. But uh, it's just good practice to take the negative one off first. So I got my belt buckle covered. This is clean. There's no grit anywhere on the fenders. We'll get some fender protectors out here a little bit later. But uh, just want to wiggle that. They've got these hooks on there. And so what I'm trying to do is to get that hook to come free. If it doesn't come free, you can unhook this and throw it aside. Pull this out the side over here, and then pull the battery. And then with the battery out of the way and the plastic housing out of the way too, then you can see better to pull it out the rest of the way. You don't want to waste time fighting something forever one way. They say, they say if you do the same thing over and over again and expect different results, that's the definition of insanity. If you do the same thing, you probably get the same results. So if something's not working for you, try something else. So let's go through and unbolt the intercooler. Like I say, I like to group the bolts together. I like to stack things. The first things I take off are the furthest back, and then I'll layer things so when I go to put it back together, it goes smoothly and easily. So I'll pull a hose here, switch to 8 millimeter, and start pulling some of these little clamps. I don't pull them out all the way, I just loosen them. But yeah, these little guns are awesome. They're so fast and they're so efficient. Stack a few of these so I have them on deck so I can switch between. So, this is the basically, this is where your radiator cap is. It's like the overflow bottle. This has to come off in order to get to the bolts for the intake. So, we'll zip it off. It's just 12 millimeter bolts here, there, and everywhere. We'll use a ratcheting wrench on the other side. These hoses we'll just put out of the way. This one goes across the front to your overflow bottle. Um, the owner's already removed all that and staged some of this job, so get that to wobble for you a little bit, switch to the ratchet and box wrenches. What I'll do when I work on a car like this is there's going to be a lot of 10, 12, and 14, so I'll set those on my cart and they'll be good to go as I need them. If you just work, try to work organized. And it seems weird, you know, like you got these little idiosyncrasies that seem like they're taking more time in the moment, but if you take half a second to mark something, or even five or ten seconds, it can save 30 minutes later of diagnosis time or having to tear something down and do, do it over again. So I just try to do good habits like that. The better habits you have, the better mechanic you are. We've already removed all the coolant from the system, so I'll go through with some 90 degree pliers. Is there another good teardown tool? Because they can get the clamp off quick, break it free, and then Chinese finger trap push the hose off. And what I try to do is I try to keep everything as together as I can. For example, I'm not going to take these hoses off, I'll leave those in place. And the reason being, I just have to put them back on. So you want to kind of plan what you do. You know, it's one thing to be going nuts tearing something apart. It's another to have a strategy or a plan. So this, like I say, one of the first things coming off. So if you want to follow me around the car. Yeah, it's pissing on the floor. So don't put the battery underneath the car ever. Because these posts can short out on the frame. Usually they won't, there's enough space that they can. So this goes in here, the next thing I pull off goes here, and here, and here, and so on. And it'll help when I go and put it back together to get the right order of operations. In cooking, you have to have the right oper order of operations. You can't throw everything in the oven and then pull it out and then mix it. You know, you gotta do it in the right order. 
working on cars, it's the same way. You have to do the same thing. So the next thing I want to pull is I want to pull the intake. I like pulling big parts like this off that are easy as I spit all over everything because uh, it makes you feel like you're getting somewhere. You know this is going to have to go for pulling the engine, but it also creates more exposure. So, and that exposure kind of gives you a better idea of a better visual, you know, like a, a 30,000 foot view of what's going on so that you can plan better. So we're going to go off camera for a little bit um, and just do some tearing into. Uh, we're just going to pull things off in layers. We'll do a little update of about five seconds every so often. So I'm pulling out the air filter box. You can see there's a lot more room here. The coolant thing's out of the way. Like this is how you'd have to get it in order to do a tune-up, for example. You can see your coil over ignition coils, these white blocks here and here. Um, so you can see it doesn't look as crowded and cluttered as it was. It's not as overwhelming of a task. Um, once we pull the intercooler off, it'll really open up some more. And we can't film every little detail of this because this job takes about 18 hours to do. I'm not uploading an 18 hour video to YouTube. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> so we have to chop it up and we'll have to skip some things and be concise. Um, but this gives you an idea of the practices I use while working and you know it would be repetition over and over the same kind of a thing. Um, but that's kind of how this works. So that's to oil your equipment daily, your air tools. So. Who does that anyway? <laughs> a lot of people I work with never do, but I've got these air ratchets. It's kind of a bad thing to take care of your tools because I want a new air ratchet. This, this one won't die. <laughs> it just lives on and on and on and on. So next up we're going to pull the power steering. I had to get this little line out of the way. Of course I marked that beforehand. Um, a lot of this has already been loosened, but there's just bolts down in the front that you can get to pretty easily. Uh, we've got a fancy pants, uh, lightweight harmonic balancer, and so that's going to be a little bit of an issue, so I'll have to use some extensions to negotiate around that. But uh, we'll pull that off, and it's the same as a power steering pump. You don't have to spill anything. These things are designed to plug and play and be able to move around. With the air box gone, the power steering pump, you see the line that comes over here and this one here with the reservoir? We'll undo the reservoir by just pulling the tab back and pulling it up and then it'll be free and then we'll just undo the bolts and we'll just take the whole thing and put it over here usually what I'll do is I'll take a coat hanger or something and hook it in here and wrap it around so it's tied off to the side and you have the engine crane over the top and you're pulling it out you want as little interference as possible you want a nice clear straight shot coming out so that's what we're going for okay so in part of doing the power steering you can see the pulley here if you move just a little to the left so we've got the pulley and we've got these emissions controls that are right over the top of where there's a bolt on the back side. I already did the long one on the right down here. I did the short one on the left. I already pulled the little tensioner one. But there's still another one that's down there so we want to pull this out. And you'll remember, I always remember these are a certain color. They're dark anodized and then this is gold anodized. So it's easy to remember that this one went to something else. A lot of the ones on the intake are gold anodized, so I keep them in the same family, but I just make a mental note, say, hey self, remember this, and then I do. So we pull this out of the way, and then when you look down on the side here, right next to the EJ25 stamp, um, you'll see that there's a bolt down in there. You'll be able to see it more clearly if you go forward just a little bit right there. So, yeah, you still can't see it. There's still too much in there. We'll pull it out and we'll show you a little better. So this is the way this was. And so I undo this line and this line. You unbuckle the electric plug on the little control solenoid. When you look down in there, lo and behold, there's the bolt. That little 12 millimeter. Normally that's pretty accessible on a non-turbocharged engine because the emissions are in different places. And then the line that went to our oil catch can over here for the PCV system was right here. And this one just comes out from the um, intake from the air filter box. So once you get that bolt to come free, you just wiggle it up and out, just like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. And this one's dark anodized. It's the same length as the short one that goes on the left. So you just make a mental note. And a 
little bracket that's further up the line, if you can pull that forward to where the hard line is, they come undone. And then you can twist this underneath to the side. And be careful with the paint because Subaru is not renowned for awesome paint jobs and their WRX line is even worse. It's like they're trying to save weight on paint. <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> It's a good idea to just mask these with paper. We'll probably do that here in the next little bit. I wasn't going to on this one, but the more I think about it, the more I think that'd be a really good idea. Just mask it like you're gonna paint it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the alternator. This holding bracket is for the nut on the back side, so you wanna put your finger on that. And as you unscrew it, you can see you've got play. If you don't put your finger on it, sometimes you'll lose that off the back side. When it stops pushing, you know you're done. So you can set your air ratchet aside. Pull this out. You already have the nut in hand. And so I'll put these together in the alternator here in a second. In the meantime, they go in the magnet dish. Undo the plug. You squeeze the tab right here. And that releases the buckle. And then pry it by this little part here. I did that off camera just because it's a pain. And it eats up camera time. It makes the video too long. Now if I didn't have the battery disconnected, if I were to touch this and then this, it would arc. So this is the main reason why we disconnect the battery, aside from we need to get the battery out. Take that, set that aside. Put your finger on top of the stud. As you go to wiggle this up and off, lift the ear because there's a washer. And you don't want this going into no man's land. You want to keep it and retain it. So I'll put it back on there with the nut. That way I don't have to have tons of nuts and bolts everywhere here. If I put them back, like I put this one in here, I put this one back here. And that way they're accounted for, they're out of the way, and they're there when you need them. On a job that's close to 20 hours, um, you want to do things to where you don't have to think about it when you come back to it. Because 20 hours later, usually you don't put in a 20 hour day. You can't because we got to do the heads at the machine shop, so you're going to have time that passes and you'll have challenges, difficulties, and stuff later. So just try to make it easy on yourself. Um, this alternator is not going to want to go in very well when I go back to it. It's got a little bushing that holds it tight. So when I take the alternator off, I'll just hold it like this. Sounds easy, huh? And I'll just tap the bushing a couple of times. Um, on each side of the opening of the C, like the bottom of the C, the top of the C. And that way when I go to put it in, I'll be like, oh wow, this is so easy. It's like putting in a new alternator. And that way I won't have as much struggle going back together. And guess where this is going? Ha, <laughs> you guessed it. You don't have to lay this aside. There's nothing to spill. So it goes down underneath the rocker panel. Look how easy this looks now. <laughs> So the next thing we'll do, this bolt right here is for the AC compressor. And then we've got a couple other little clamps and things. You also notice I have a short screwdriver. I'll have this on hand for the job because you've got all of these little tabs that you have to pull back on. And then I used it to pry up the alternator part. And then this little release tab for the AC compressor clutch. Pull that down, pull it out. There's another one just like this that's white that I pulled out. That's the pressure switch for the power steering to make your engine idle up so that you have enough power steering pressure in a parking lot. So anyway, we just get these things all undone and out of the way. I'll have to undo this bracket. Let's see. Nope, not that one. Not yet anyway. So I'll pull the bolts out for... There's a couple of ways to do this. I can either pull these bolts here. There's these two and just pull the whole bracket with this, or I can pull the brackets here, 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 and here. And that's what I actually wind up doing, is I pull these two and then this one down here. Because I need these on, because this is where you lift the engine by. This is your engine hoist point. There's one here, and then there's another one down under the intercooler. So it's easy if you're just going to get it out of the way, and you're not pulling the engine. If you're just going to do the heads in the vehicle, to just uh, do these two and that one. But otherwise you want to do these two and this one. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so we're going to take the intercooler off. It's just a couple of bolts on the side. You get your PVC lines off. There's three total because it splits. That's why we have two catch cans. Um, you want to undo both clamps here. 
Sometimes it comes off the throttle body well, sometimes it comes off the intercooler well, and then underneath it here there's a clamp with a silicone hose back there. You can see the red one underneath. So that's been undone. And what you want to do is you want to manipulate it this way so that it comes out off from here and out from there at the same time. And they're never easy. And sometimes you have to use a pry bar. And I forgot one of the clamps too. There's also clamps on this. It's usually easiest to just pull these two bolts and leave that in place. So I'm going to do that and then I'll get back on camera. Okay. Nothing like a wiggle test to let you know what you need to do. I've even had this very inner cooler off before and I still forgot, so don't feel bad if you do. I found that beating myself up when I make a mistake, like, oh, stupid, especially with a camera rolling and feeling like thousands of people are going to see this, it's counterproductive. <laughs> if you can forgive yourself and rebound quickly, you'll be a lot happier mechanic. This is a frustrating profession and it can be really difficult at times. It can really test you, really try you. You're going to make mistakes, everybody does, but in the end, you know, if you can rebound quickly from that and handle it, that's a good sign of emotional maturity. You'll have a lot better go at it. You'll be a lot happier person and easier to deal with. Then you won't have to be kept in the shop away from the customers because you're a raging rat fink type personage of a personality. You get the idea when I say rat fink, don't you? <laughs> But anyway, that's how you do that. And see, this doesn't look too bad. This is manageable. Speaking of mistakes, when I narrated before the bracket was only these two bolts, the bracket's a little different on this particular um, YMM, your make model. Um, you do have to take the bolts out from underneath, and they are a little difficult. So what I've chosen to do is to use an extension and go in from behind. And that way my air tool's here. Still get the air tool. Don't have to tediously do it by hand and then just hit this one over the top here too. I just use a long one that has a wobble on the end of it. Remember wobbles are rounded. That enables the socket to be able to pivot just a little bit. That's pretty valuable when you're dealing in tight spaces. So take the air hatchet, stick this down in there, set this aside for now, and uh, we'll hit this one first. And they're 14s by the way, I should know that. I'm not going to beat myself up. <laughs> See how I squeeze that in there? If we ever figure out how to fast forward the footage, you guys are going to love it. We'll just fast forward these, but it may not be this time. You ever heard the saying, uh, Jack of all trades, master of none? You know, it's like you only have so many time, so much time resource to deal with to learn editing or, let's see that went, or work on cars, or whatever it is you choose to do with yourself. Time's all you have in reality. You have two freedoms. Um, there's a mental freedom, and then there's an agency freedom. The mental freedom is how you choose to think about what's happening around you. You don't always get to choose your stimulus, but you get to choose how you react to it, and that's in that little space of time that you think about it before you do anything. Some people don't have that space of time and they just react. They're also back of house type personalities that aren't allowed to the front of the shop to talk to the customers. That's a good tool to have in your tool belt mentally, is to be able to pause before you react and maybe think about what your response is instead of just doing an emotional survival base instinct type reaction. So we've got our bottom bolts out of the AC compressor. We've also removed a lot of the things that are here. And this is going to twist the hoses a little bit. You want to unbracket the you know the vacuum line for the power brake booster and get it out of the way. But then I'm just going to turn it upside down and set it aside like that. Before running the car, it's a good idea to let this sit for a little bit in the upright position. Normally that happens because things take time anyway. <laughs> but anyway, it's getting pretty open. We're to where we can get to most of our intake bolts and things aren't too scary. Um, as far as 
The turbo goes, we'll be addressing that. That's back here. We'll be pulling some heat shields and some other brackets here shortly. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and undo some of this wire harness stuff. Um, I've already undone these big plugs down here. They've got a little buckle on the wire side where you push the buckle down in toward the wires and that pulls it off of the bracket and then undo it from the rest. I just like to get them free. Um, you got to get them off the intake manifold because the intake manifold is going to be sitting on the floor over there in a little while. So we'll pull the, the bracket. There's one here. Just crack it for while you're here with the 12. Subarus it runs around this way and these are a little higher and the, most of the newer models are like that anyway but there's two bolts right here um, there's one here one here the 12 millimeter and then you can see one over on this side so we're gonna move the wire harness I've already removed the little hanger bolt for this so that this is free and what I like to do is just get them free there's so much going on and there's such variations between years on these typically what I'll is I'll pull all the bolts out and wiggle test and see what's holding it down. On a lot of them you have a wire junction here but because the exhaust and the turbos here you don't have the junction here it's over on the other side and we've already done, done that. You have to pull this up enough to get to the bolt back here but that's about it. I kind of went overboard but that's just what I do. We'll crack that one out. Um, same thing on this one. and roll. And then there's another one. You'll see where the extension is and be able to drive where it is on the one you're working on if you're following along at home. On the back side, so you have two here and two here, but it's all kind of an assembly and then you just repeat the same thing on the other side. You can see this bolt and you can see the casting where the bolt goes all the way down to the head. Now ultimately what we want to do is remove the cylinder heads, but I just like to pull the motor out because you're so close anyway. It makes it a lot easier to get all your torque specs and everything right with it out. And you have more room to work so you go faster. But this is the head gasket right here. And the head gasket didn't fail. Remember we had this uh, composite wheel fail, cam wheel. So we're going to get in there and replace some valves, but part of that's pulling the head. Usually when you do a Subaru, it's the head gasket. This little guy here that you're going for. So these are the fuel lines, and then also you got a vacuum line here for pressure regulation or whatever. I've never even followed that to know what it is. I just pull them off all the time. You got a vacuum line. It's dry at the bottom. You got your pressure line going in at the top, and then you got the other one at the bottom. So we're just going to pull those off, and they're going to spray everywhere or not. So pull that one and pull the bottom one. bottom one's not going to squirt like the top one did. Yep. Which is nice. Well, it'll spill, but it's not going to spray. Sometimes these can really spray, so wear some eye protection. Like Spanky does, and like I should. So there's that. I've got all the bolts out. So we got most everything off from the intake. And unplugged. You want to unplug your crankshaft position sensor your uh, coolant temperature switch and uh, coolant temperature sensor get all that stuff undone and then from there I just lift it up and tech check 
There are going to be a knock sensor back there that we need to get and then there's a couple of coolant lines that go to the throttle body that still need to come off. They're a lot easier on the newer model ones than the old ones. The old ones were a little, little bit harder. We'll pull them off. Same thing, I just uh, pull up the clamp, twist them, and then Chinese finger trap them. You know, just pull at the end of the hose. And then they're a lot easier to get out. <laughs> like that. And this other one I'll probably pull from the throttle body side. And turn your 90 pliers like that and get it out. There we go. So now when we lift it, we can see what else we need to pull. Looks like I've got some harnesses, you know, for wiring and whatnot that I need to fish back through. Couldn't decide whether to pull it off from the intake or pull the intake from it. So we're going to have to make an executive decision on that. We got the vacuum line for the power brake booster. Something's still stuck under there. I think it's one of the PCB lines that's tangled up in the AC. So we'll work that out. You just give it a little wiggle test and uh, see what else you got up the intake. We've wiggle tested it. We've unplugged the ignition coil wires that hang clear down the back side. And they're all free and ready to go. Um, you don't have to undo as much of the wire harness this way because it's attached underneath so you're better off just leave it in. Um, there's a PCB hose that you got to kind of finagle around. And I've found it's easier to pull the intake boot from the turbo. Um, you just wiggle it, pry it, and up and out. So we'll take this and guess where it's going? You can guess it right next to the inner cooler. Yeah. Gently, I don't want to scrape it on the concrete, but I just gently place it up underneath the vehicle. So you can see now you've got your crossover coolant pipe. You can see into here, you can see the valve stems. That camera probably can see them even without this. It's doing pretty good. But uh, this is the line where the head stops and the rest of the you know engine begins. The block is from here over. You want to be careful not to get any debris or anything into the turbo. Um, what I like to do is just take a fresh new paper towel and shove it in there because that way you don't wind up having a nut, a bolt or something in there. You don't want to bend the fins but you want to just tuck it in there gently and that way when I pull this out any debris that may have fallen will just come out with it. That's the theory in practice it works pretty well. So that's that and uh, looks like the plugs missing from here. There should be a plastic plug on there. Interesting. So anyway that's the intake manifold in a nutshell. Um, the next push or the next video that we're going to do is about getting the exhaust and the starter and the bell housing bolts and the motor mounts and everything off. This will be the first half of the engine pull assembly for an STI.